Uh, hi, uh, my name is Sandeep, and I work for Tar Research Capital. Uh, and today I'll be talking about Euclid's algorithm and how. So what we're going to do is we're going to make small modifications to Euclid's algorithm for computing GCD and see if we can convert that to one of the popular algorithms in C++ standard library. All right, first, so uh, this is a quote that I took from Wikipedia, but the reference is from a real reference. So, uh, <laughs> so it says that Euclid's algorithm is the granddaddy of all the algorithms because it's the oldest non-trivial algorithm that has survived to the present day. So let's take a look at the C++ implementation of Euclid's al algorithm to compute GCD. So what it says that, give me two numbers, and I'm going to give, return back to you, to you the greatest number which divides both the numbers. If the two numbers are equal, that's it, we are done. But if one of them is greater, subtract the smaller one from the greater and compute the GCD on the two new numbers. Pretty amazing how this actually does lead to the GCD. It's, it's not a trivial proof to prove that this does lead to GCD, but it's not difficult as well. All right, so let's start modifying this. Uh, so, oh, okay, just, just, to, just to prove that it actually does lead to GCD. So if you have two numbers, 39 and 15, what's the GCD, by the way? Three. All right. That's it. So, uh, so instead of just imagining them as two numbers, let's imagine them as two adjacent line segments. And uh, what we are essentially doing is we are subtracting the smaller line segment from the larger one. And uh, we'll stop when the two line segments are equal. Now, we all love C++, and instead of imagining them as line segments, let's imagine a flat container, like a vector, and these are the elements inside it. Uh, let, let's have three iterators, first, middle, and last. And what we are essentially doing is, so in the, previous, in the previous GCD algorithm, we were just subtracting them and then applying the algorithm to the new numbers that we have. So instead of subtracting them, let's just swap them. That's it, that's the only change in the algorithm that we have done. So instead of subtracting, just swap them. By the way, it took me surprisingly long time to do this. If any one of you was at John Laker's talk, I don't know how he did that. <laughs> 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 so yeah, so, so we swap them, and uh, we move our iterator forward, and we are going to apply the algorithm to the new it iterators that we have. So that's it. So this is the original, uh, GCD algorithm, and the other one is the new algorithm that we have come up with. Uh, I'm not giving it a name, it's just a placeholder name. Uh, so you can see that the structure of the two algorithms is almost exactly similar. And now my claim is that the algorithm on the left, you have all seen before. So just to go back, uh, this is our container. We have three iterators. And instead of subtracting them, we swap them and move the first ahead. Yes, this is Sean Perrin's favorite algorithm. So it's pretty amazing how uh, this is a so this is a recursive implementation of rotate, and the only reason the recursion terminates is because GCD exists. So I I, uh, I found it pretty amazing that an old algorithm can be modified to have such a common algorithm in the standard library. That's it. <laughs> oh. By the way, the picture on the, on, on the left is a picture that I clicked on Monday, and the picture on the right is the picture I clicked on Wednesday. <laughs> so that, uh, uh, that colleague, is, uh, his name is Mark, he got a sunburn on Monday. Whereas most likely he got a uh, frostbite on Wednesday. That's Aspen for you. All right.